welcome back to my world of stuff. Now, as I did mention in my last video, my rather theatrical goodbye video last week, I would be back doing videos. Uh, it's just I was going to ease off on doing regular stuff. Uh, as I mentioned, it would be possibly a week, two weeks, I put something up. Or when there was something which happened or which I felt I wanted to talk about or review. Well, I did want to do a little piece, um, mainly because I've been thinking about the news which came out last week about Netflix. Um, I won't rehearse it again in too much detail because I'm sure you've all heard it and you've seen various other people online and on YouTube talking about what I call the Netflix dilemma. Now, the interesting news that came out last week was that Netflix in the first quarter of this year had lost 200,000 subscribers. This caused the value of their their stocks on the stock exchange to plunge a little bit. And it was the first decline in Netflix subscriptions, I think, ever recorded. Uh, certainly way below expectations. I think that Netflix uh, over the years has grown and grown so much, particularly during the pandemic when people were stuck at home looking for things to watch. They subscribed to Netflix. Um, and of course, now we're in a different world. Uh, the pandemic has receded, um, but we're in a, not exactly a recession, but the cost of living is rising fuel prices, food prices rising, and people are tightening their belts. I wish I could do that. <laughs> uh, but people are tightening their belts, and they're looking at things that are luxuries. And I think that now, perhaps a monthly subscription to a streaming service they're not using so much is, is now considered to be a luxury. And plus, of course, people are now able to go out and about and do things. Perhaps people are spending more time outdoors, especially with the summer coming up. People are going to make their own entertainment outdoors rather than sitting in front of a TV screen. So I think Netflix are in a, a, a difficult position, that, which is compounded by the fact that they are slowly but surely losing the licenses to lots of shows that people subscribe to Netflix to watch. I'm thinking just one example is Friends. So Friends seems to be on TV all the time. I know it's on, uh, I think it's on E4 or one of those channels all the time. Uh, but... Netflix have the rights to Friends, but they're losing them soon. I think they're going back to Paramount. Because the thing is, when Netflix started, they were the streamers. But now there are lots of streaming channels. Everybody's got a streaming channel. Amazon, um, Now TV, Disney, BritBox, Hulu, Paramount. All those, not all of those are you know, available over here in the UK. There are many, many streaming options available. And understandably, the students, students, the studios... <laughs> Um, want to be able to stream the shows that they have made. So all these shows that they licensed out to people like Amazon and Netflix, they're going to pull them all back in. We've seen this already with um, the Marvel Netflix shows that uh, Disney Plus have now taken back and are now streaming because they are Marvel shows, although you know, I'm not going to go into a big discussion about whether they're part of the MCU or not, but they are Marvel-branded characters and that's all coming back under the umbrella of Marvel stroke Disney, and they obviously they want these things on Disney+. Plus. So I think we're going to find that one of the main attractions for Netflix, I think, despite all the new product that they make, they make all these new shows and all these new films, but I think one of the main attractions for people was that they could find lots of classic shows, that favourite shows, and I think when, when times are, are tough and, and the world's a rough place, People like to go back to the things that give them comfort. I mean, this is a theme of this channel in a way. Over the last few years, I've been revisiting old TV shows and old comics and things that I like because it is uh, it's a warm sort of feeling in a, in, a, in a world that can be a little cold. So I think that Netflix losing those shows is going to have a detrimental effect on them. And I, I was just reading today online a couple of people saying that They've only got Netflix for things like Friends and a couple of other shows. And once they're gone, they're going to cancel their subscriptions. I don't know what that says about people's um, ability to move on and to take on board new things. Because Netflix generates a lot of content. A lot of it is very good. And it is a shame if people pay eight quid just to watch episodes of a 20-year-old sitcom that's freely available in other places. I mean, you can pick up the, the DVD box up for about five or a ten in a lot of places now, but of course, physical media is so yesterday. So I think Netflix find themselves in a difficult position. I think it's predicted that they're going to lose a lot more subscribers, maybe another up to two million uh, across the rest of the year. And that is difficult for them. And you sort of wonder, well, where do they go from, from here? And I think it, it, this is possibly... Pivotable, pivotal moment in 
the history and the development of streaming because all we've seen since streaming became a thing is this upward slope of everybody's getting more and more subscribers and people are flocking more and more to these services. But I think what we're probably going to see now over the next few years is a lot of these channels, or these facilities, if you like, are going to sort of level out a bit. And I think that they're going to be there. People are going to have them. But I think in the way that terrestrial TV is no longer a big thing. I mean, I, I look at the TV ratings because I'm sort of fascinated by stuff like that. And TV ratings in Britain are through the floor these days. Um, you know, you get the odd event drama or the event thing, which will pull in seven or eight million viewers. But the big shows on TV are no longer the big shows. If you look at the soap operas that rule the roost in Britain for ages and years, Coronation Street, Emmerdale, EastEnders, their viewing figures are around the four or five million now. Uh, entertainment shows like Britain's Got Talent, six, seven million, whereas there used to be 16 million. And this is all because there are so many other options. There are so many other TV viewing options. And of course, not just that, there's all the other options people have, the gaming, YouTube, you know, there's so, you know, nobody's just fixed in front of the television anymore. There are lots of ways to spend your leisure time. And I think it's going to impact quite a lot on the streamers because there is only so much money that goes around. So all these people are charging seven, eight, nine quid for their services. People are going to say, well, that's enough. That's enough. Um, and they're going to stick to one or two. Now, whether that's going to be Netflix, whether it's going to be Amazon or Apple, I don't know. Or whether, and I think it's possible that people are just tired of TV, tired of that thing in the corner. They don't rely on that thing in the corner to entertain them in the way that they did. And I think it was obviously it was a godsend during the pandemic because everybody was watching films and everybody was watching TV. Didn't really see a massive spike in terrestrial viewing figures, but because I think people were going to the streamers a bit more. So I think that certainly for Netflix, the problem is that they generate a lot of content. They throw out a lot of shows. And I've always thought the problem with Netflix is they never make the most of the stuff they have. And I think this whole idea of binging a series, I've discussed this before, I've discussed it with my podcast partner, Scott. I will binge, but I'm not a, I won't sit all night and watch eight episodes of a show. I'll watch it over two or three nights if it's something particularly good. But I much prefer the old model of watching an episode a week. That suits me. I think it suits the programs. I think it suits the product. Because I think if you're a TV producer or writer or director or actor, you may spend nine months making an eight-part TV series. And Netflix throws it out on a Friday, and there you are. You can watch this now. It might get buzzed for a day or two if, you know, and only a handful of Netflix shows really create an ongoing word of mouth buzz. But it's there. It just lands with a splat and then you can watch it when you want to. But it's not a talking point. You know, in the old days, and it still happens now, a TV show will come along that suddenly, wow, this is something big. And Squid Game, I suppose, is the most recent example. That was Netflix. It was a show to write, and people started watching it and thinking, wow, this is good. And it was a word-of-mouth thing that sort of caught on. And it gave Squid Game the legs that most Netflix shows don't have because they just throw them out there and they sink or swim. Some of them do very well, but they don't have longevity because they just arrive and people consume them and then they move on. I think that perhaps Netflix might want to think about changing that model uh, because I think certainly they're going to be making less content or making less content available. Already we've heard talk that they're anim they've got rid of a lot of their animation staff and certain other projects have been cancelled. There's been lots of cancellations of shows announced over the last few days. I think they're probably going to scale back production slightly, which I think would give them the opportunity to change their delivery schedule to issue shows an episode a week or maybe two episodes to get people in on board and then an episode a week which is what some of the other networks amazon do it i think apple do it some of the other streamers do it real people in with a couple of good first episodes and then drip feed the next six or seven or whatever i just think that's a better way to enjoy your television i'm watching a number of series at the moment which are doing that episodically week by week um couple of examples a series called shining veil vale, which is on apple which is a sort of supernatural i'm not gonna call it a comedy it's funny but it's a supernatural series starring courtney cox from friends funny enough and that came out i think it was the first two episodes and then it's episode a week for six weeks seven weeks after that and that made the experience of it 
last longer because I was, you know, Sunday night new episodes were dropping. I thought, oh, quit, shiny veil tonight. Or, some, or Monday if I forgot to watch it on the sat Sunday. Rather than, rather than have just eight, nine episodes that are there and you can watch them all, you watch them week by week. I mean, compare that to another show which I watched recently called Wolf Like Me, which I think was on Amazon. Uh, six episodes, only half hour episodes of sort of a comedy, drama, supernatural thing again with um, Josh Gad. All six episodes dropped and I watched them in two blocks of three episodes. Really thought the show was great. But by halfway through the following week, I'd moved on to other things. And it wasn't a deferred pleasure where I thought, well, there's another episode of Wolf Night Me next week. So I just think that perhaps Netflix ought to change their their model. Um, instead of hurling so much stuff out there, which gets forgotten and gets lost. Just make these things a prolonged pleasure by issuing episodes every week. Like I can see two episodes to reel people in and then an episode a week. I think that's possibly something that they might want to think about doing because now if you know i i've heard of people who weren't netflix subscribers heard about squid game subscribed to netflix for a month watch squid game and maybe a couple other things and then cancel their subscription but if you've got a show which is going to stretch over two or three months you're more likely to make netflix become more of a habit people are going to work you know if they're watching i don't know say squid game uh, they're going to watch that and they might browse and see what else is out there and watch a few other things. And they think, oh, actually, Netflix is quite good. It's got some good stuff. And I think that perhaps they're, they're, they're pinning their colours to the wrong mast, if you like. It would be a shame to see things happen to Netflix because they do generate a lot of stuff. And there's a lot of good stuff. Um, but because there are so many services, it, it is very competitive. And I, But I do think that Netflix's current woes... Um, I know they, they'll probably work around it. I think their subscription model will change. There's talk of different tiers of subscriptions and so on. But I, And I think that they will probably ride it out. But I think we'll probably in the long term see less new material. And I think they'll probably be a bit more cautious about what they renew, uh, what they commission in the first place. Um, but the main thing I, I would like to see them adopt a, a a weekly schedule of release because it, it makes shows a bit more special when you watch them over two months instead of two nights which just my two parents I'm, I'm of that generation where you know we had bbc one on itv and then bbc two and channel four you didn't have that sort of thing you watched an episode when it came out every week and that's my mindset of watching television a generational thing now i appreciate that might not be popular with youngsters who want to binge the whole thing in one go but I don't see any reason why we can't put the brakes on our TV viewing every now and again and savour it instead of gorging it. Right, um, that's just some random thought about where Netflix is at the moment and what the ramifications are both for Netflix and other streaming services. What do you guys think? What do you think is the future for streaming? Do you think terrestrial TV is on its last legs or do you think it's always have a niche sort of position in in popular culture, certainly in British culture, it's been a big thing in British culture. Do you think that there are too many streaming services? Which ones do you follow particularly? Which are your favourite streaming services? It's difficult because they've all got attractive shows now and again that you want to watch. Particularly, I think Apple TV is coming on really well at the moment. So what are your favourite streaming services? What do you think about Netflix's woes at the moment? Do you think they'll ride them out? Do you think they're going to suffer more? Do you think they're going to suffer with a lack of content? What do you think about the way that we take on these shows. Would you prefer a, a drip, uh, sort of drip feeding rather than binging? Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Um, so welcome back. Um, this might not actually be the first video you see. I don't know when I'm going to release this video. I've recorded it and I'll edit it and get it ready. But this might come out after the film reviews, which will come out at the end of the week for Doctor Strange. And I'll tack on to the end of that, a review of the new Nick Cage film, The Unbearable Weight of Massive Talent, which I saw last week. Incidentally, cinema I saw it in was giving away free posters. And I managed to pick up two of them. So I'll be framing one of those and bunging it on the wall in the cinema room before long. Uh, right, that's me done for now. Thank you for watching. Welcome back. Like I said in the previous video, I'm not going anywhere permanently, but the videos will be a bit more random. Thank you for watching. Until I see you next time, just keep taking the stuff.